Hello guys, welcome to Global Happenings today. We have a trending news here for you. And the headline of the news reads, Benue indigenous takes to flight as headsmen invade Benue with 4,000 cows. See details. But before we continue with details of the news and for the analysis, please, if you have not subscribed, just hit that red subscribe button. And if you subscribe but yet you have not hit the bell icon, please do well to hit it so that you can get notification anytime we publish videos on YouTube. All right, let's look at the news in detail. Tension has again gripped communities in Benue State following a massive influx of over 4,000 cows and Fulani headsmen in four local government areas of the state. This is just as a suspected Fulani pastoralist last Sunday reportedly gang raped a woman of five children to coma in Obadibo local government area of the state. The local government area invaded by these Fulani headers include Goma, Kwande, Agatu, Ado, and Logo. Residents in those areas told New Telegraph in confidence that the present hate of cattle is frightening, stressing that some persons have already started fleeing their homes. With the movement of large heads of cow in our community, we are afraid because it portends danger. We recall the incident of the past years, especially how hundreds of persons were murdered and many others taken refuge in camps and are yet to return home until now, a villager said. The community leader in Logo, local government area chief Joseph Anawa said the headsmen who come in thousands with large number of cattle take over part of the local government, a development he said has thrown most people in trepidation. Commenting on the development, Chief Press Secretary to Governor Samuel Tommy Stateva Akazi alleged that the sudden influx of Arm hetman in part of the state is politically motivated. Now, there are a lot of reactions by Nigerians in respect to these, but let us also remember that um, the governor had already, there's already a law that in play that is in place which prohibits, you know, anything like open grazing. That's, I'm talking about the open grazing prohibition and ranches establishment law of 2017. And that law is still sacrosanct and it is expected that the people, everyone irrespective of ethnicity, religion, and place of origin, they're all expected to obey it. And we believe that the law does not accord preference to anyone and with that law in place it is believed that um, they will be stopped by all means though the government have been talking about that the people shouldn't um, see that as anything because there is already that law but there's a lot of fear in the land and the fear is to the fact that um, something like this the president has a voice uh, and the voice is speaking of dead, uh, fear and dead. Fear and dead in the sense that something like this happened in 2017, 18 precisely. And this cause of dead was um, unthinkable. This cause of dead was so much that um, it awakened the consciousness of everyone to the fact that actually this is not just the fight between farmers and Fulani, that's uh, cattle uh, headers, but it is the handiwork of men whose heartbeat is towards terrorism, you know, towards fighting the people, towards disrupting activities in the area. And that's why most people believe that at this juncture, they must do everything to fight and stop their invasion. The government has a part to play, and that part to play is to engage with the law, which is already on ground. They have to engage the activities of uh, the uh, military in this area, the activities of security agencies in this area, and see how they can bring these people to book by arresting them 
and whatever provision of the law, they should be fuel on them so that they will come to understand that no one is above the law. You know, apart from this, I want to say that this is one of the reasons Nigerians have been talking about the issue of regional um, security outfit. Because the truth is that if, as the chief press secretary has rightly said, this is an, you know, this whole thing, invasion of thousands of haters into Benue where is politically motivated then um uh, we are rest assured that the military the, the police and as the security agencies may not do much to quell um their influx they, they may not really fight it as expected and the reason being that unfortunately um the so-called police and military, they are regulated by the federal government. So if the federal government or the voice of the top say, hey, stop there, nobody should stop the invasion of these people into the Benue uh, uh, jurisdiction, automatically they won't do anything. But if you have a state-controlled um, security outfit, automatically they will jump into action and see how they can withhold the advancement of these persons. This is something that must be taken serious. Don't forget that fairly recently in Benue State, a case like this came up and we heard about the number of deaths. Not just elderly people were killed, but even younger people were also involved in the killing. They killed a reasonable number of younger people which had triggered the uh, governor, governor Okoa to come up with the suggestion uh, that they, uh, they they have decided to ban not just him alone but uh, the Ure Uweru kingdom in uh, Ogeli local government area. They've decided to ban the beef eating in the area and they said they do not want anything. They do not even want to cite any Fulani headsmen owing to the evil that they have perpetuated in the land. And with this, I think a lot of states right now are queuing up behind them to see how they can stop the invasion of these people. But that's why I say just the law alone, the uh, anti-open grazing law alone may not suffice. At this point, it's needful for them also to place a ban and also to engage the, the, engage the uh, strength and knowledge of the Ministry of Agriculture in this area. I know very well that a lot of people are into the business of selling cow meat. So if you stop the sales of cow meat or ban beef, they are out of business. But I think the ideal thing for the government to do to ensure that they are not just making decisions that will end up affecting the economic activities of certain persons, they should think of possibly starting up a ranch, invite professionals, whether it is home or abroad, in invite them to come in, train some agriculturists, train some persons who are expert in animal business, train them, and then see how we can start importing cows and start raising them and making sure that they also provide meats to the people, do it in a commercial quantity such that the needs of the people can be met because this is the only way you can stop, number one, the possible uh, invasion of the state by these guys because I know there are some persons who are claiming that uh, it's good enough, but at the same time, that's the decision of stopping the open grazing is good. The decision of you know stopping the consumption of beef, that's cow meat, is also good. But since it's affecting their economic strength, economic activity, they can also stylishly smuggle these cows into the city. They can open ways for these guys to bring in their cows so that they can continue with business. But if the government decides to start off a, a cow business now in a commercial quantity, selling it in even a lower price to the people and uh, ensuring that there is continuity in it. I'm, I'm telling you, these people will forget the story of the Fulani headsman. The only reason why they won't forget and they will still want to scheme around uh, smuggling these cows into Benue is because the government is not doing anything. So, what's the suggestion? Bring in more people into this stuff so that they can help out and, you know, continue to do help those people out that's where we are going to leave it go to our comment session let us interact what's your position in respect to this do you think that this is a good step in the right direction that's for government to invoke uh, the strength of these guys or do you think that it's going to you know 
um, that they are coming in is going to cause the people to flee? Or do you think that the government of the day will wake up to their responsibility of protecting lives and property? But don't also forget that uh, right now, since they say it is politically motivated, the people themselves are not sure that the government can do so much to protect them. So I believe that at this point that the government should, you know, take up responsibility of, you know, doing the right thing.